Toasting your bread a little too long might seem like a harmless mistake, but could it be dangerous? There's growing concern that burnt toast could be linked to cancer due to a chemical called acrylamide that forms when foods are browned. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the question. Can burnt toast cause cancer? We're counting down the five scientific reasons why burnt toast could be affecting your health. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how dark is too dark, and what's happening inside your cells when you eat overcooked bread. Curious if your overcooked toast could be a health hazard? Let's find out. A slice of bread contains simple starches and proteins called amino acids. These natural components are perfectly safe and easy for your body to digest. One particular amino acid, called asparagine, is present in all bread. It sits harmlessly alongside natural sugars. As your bread warms up, these ingredients start to take part in a process called the Maillard reaction. This is what gives toast its appealing golden brown color and that wonderful toasted flavor. But there's a disadvantage to this transformation. When the temperature climbs to exactly 120 degrees Celsius, the asparagine and sugar molecules connect under intense heat and form acrylamide. This is why the temperature of your toaster matters. Below 120 degrees, your bread simply warms up. But every degree above this critical point creates more chemical reactions, producing large amounts of acrylamide. Research shows a clear connection between temperature, cooking time, and the amount of acrylamide that forms. It's not just about how hot your toaster gets, it's also about how long your bread stays in there. The color of your toast tells an even more detailed story about what's happening at a molecular level. And that's exactly what we need to look at next. Scientists have created special charts or safety guides that help us understand exactly what the colors mean. The lightest shade, a pale golden color, contains very small amounts of acrylamide, which is around 5 micrograms per slice. This is the safest zone for your toast, where you get the flavor you want without unnecessary risk. As the color deepens to medium brown, the amount of acrylamide starts to increase. The chemical reactions speed up, creating more of this compound with each shade darker. When toast begins to appear much darker, the amount of acrylamide can jump to 50 micrograms or even higher. A study by the European Food Safety Authority found that the longer bread cooks and the darker it gets, the more acrylamide forms. The perfect toast should appear as a light, even golden brown in color. This shade gives you the toasted flavor you want while keeping acrylamide levels as low as possible. When you see patches of dark brown or black, that's a clear signal that too much acrylamide has formed. The golden rule of toasting is simple. Always aim for light golden brown, and never let your toast turn dark brown or black. Think of this rule as your daily guide to safer toast. Some parts of your toast might brown faster than others. So, watch out for darker spots, especially around the edges. It's also important to note that your bread is evenly toasted to avoid these hot spots where more harmful compounds can form. But knowing about these color changes is just one part of the problem. Once you eat that piece of toast, a whole new process begins. What happens to these compounds once they enter your body? The acrylamide in your system tells you why controlling toast color is important for your health. Most harmful substances get stopped by your immune system but acrylamide knows exactly how to pass through it. When you swallow that piece of toast, your digestive system works by breaking it down. While most of the bread components are processed normally, acrylamide takes a different path. Unlike the regular nutrients that your body knows how to handle, acrylamide quickly moves from your stomach into your bloodstream. Once in your blood, acrylamide travels throughout your entire body. It has the alarming ability to go places where harmful substances usually can't reach. It can pass through protective barriers that normally keep dangerous chemicals out in sensitive areas like your brain and nervous system. Inside your cells, acrylamide starts causing trouble in several ways. One of its most serious effects is how it interacts with your DNA. 
The DNA is the body's instruction manual that teaches your cells how to work properly. Research shows that acrylamide can damage DNA, leading to changes in the body and affecting how your cells behave. Acrylamide also affects your nervous system, particularly the nerves in your hands and feet. People exposed to too much acrylamide over time can develop numbness and tingling in their limbs. This is because acrylamide messes up the proteins that help your nerve cells to function correctly. The good news is that acrylamide doesn't stay in your body for very long. It usually breaks down within a few hours to a day. However, this doesn't mean we can ignore it. Scientists have discovered that acrylamide leaves behind signs of its presence, even after it's gone. It creates specific patterns of DNA damage that researchers can identify. While your body can handle small amounts of acrylamide, regular exposure to higher levels, like those found in burnt toast, might overwhelm your body's natural defenses. Now we discover how acrylamide travels through your body, ever think about what role might these cellular changes play in the development of cancer? Scientists first discovered acrylamide's cancer connection through studies with laboratory animals. These studies showed clear evidence that mice exposed to acrylamide developed several types of cancer, including breast cancer, thyroid cancer, and testicular cancer. With this, researchers quickly began looking for similar patterns in humans. A study that followed 4,000 older adults over time found that people who ate more foods containing acrylamide had a higher risk of dying from cancer. They discovered that higher acrylamide intake was linked to certain types of cancer, particularly ovarian and endometrial cancer. This was especially true for women who regularly ate foods with high levels of acrylamide, like very dark or burnt toast. Think about what this means for your daily breakfast. Every time you eat darkly toasted bread, you're adding more acrylamide to your system. While the cancer connection is real, it's just one of many factors that can increase cancer risk. Activities like smoking, lack of exercise, and other dietary choices contribute more to its development. Remember that most of the strongest evidence for cancer risk comes from cases where people were exposed to high levels of acrylamide over long periods. This means that occasionally eating slightly dark toast isn't a cause for panic. The real concern comes from making burnt toast a daily habit, especially for older adults. But there's something even more important to consider about acrylamide exposure. While we've been talking about toast, it's actually just one source of this compound in our daily lives. When we look at how acrylamide adds up from multiple sources over time, we discover an even more concerning pattern about its effects on our health. The average person consumes up to 160 times more acrylamide through everyday foods. Scientists have measured how much acrylamide we consume each day. For most adults, it's between 0.3 to 0.8 micrograms for every kilogram of body weight. This compound wasn't meant to be in our food at all. It only appears when we cook certain foods at high temperatures. People who eat lots of foods containing acrylamide don't usually reach dangerous levels in a day. But again, it's not only about a single day's exposure. Your body works hard to remove acrylamide, but constant exposure means you're just adding more before your system can remove the old. It's like trying to empty a sink while the tap is still running. Even though some drains away, there's always a certain amount present in your body. This steady exposure becomes more concerning when we look at how acrylamide affects different age groups. As we age, our bodies become less efficient at removing harmful compounds. The systems that usually protect us from damage become weaker, making it harder to deal with regular acrylamide exposure. The European Food Safety Authority found that most people's daily intake isn't dangerous, but the long-term exposure to it is alarming. Some people are especially at risk for higher acrylamide accumulation. If you regularly eat foods that are overcooked or burnt, your daily intake could be much higher than average. This is likely true for people who enjoy very crispy or well-done foods, as these cooking methods tend to produce more acrylamide. Remember that our bodies don't have a natural warning system for acrylamide buildup. Unlike immediately harmful substances that might make us feel sick, acrylamide accumulation happens quietly over time. 
You might not notice any effects until after years of exposure. The solution isn't to stop eating toast or other foods that might contain acrylamide. Instead, it's about understanding how to reduce exposure over time. Small changes in how we prepare food can make a big difference in reducing your daily acrylamide intake. Scientists recommend choosing preparation methods that avoid high temperatures when possible. Boiling and steaming food creates even less acrylamide than frying or toasting at high heat. This is especially important for seniors who might be more sensitive to the effects of long-term exposure. And there you have it. We've explored the five reasons why burnt toast might be harming your health. It turns out that burnt toast can increase cancer risk, and it's all connected to a chemical called acrylamide. Be careful not only with burnt toast, but with other overcooked foods too, as they can potentially harm your health and may increase the risk of cancer over time. Were you aware of the potential risks of burnt toast? What steps will you take to make healthier choices moving forward? Share your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our latest health tips. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please consider showing your support with a super thanks or checking out our merchandise for some fantastic finds. Your support helps us continue to bring you valuable content to improve your health and wellness. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.